This is Will Montgomery, former Washington Redskins center. Yo, what's good, folks? This is Trey Johnson, the headbanger, yo. And you're listening to Mess Hall with Rally Captain and Tailgate Ted. Word. What's going on, Rally? How you been, man? Oh, my brother, my brother. It's been two weeks since we've been on the mics together. And uh, I've been all right. Just just busy. Just just busy, man. There's so much SB event stuff going on as well as my other job. So, and I know that you've been doggone uh, out gallivanting. So, the question is, how have you been? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's It has been way too long. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been doing this, but good news is we didn't miss much. There's nothing going on from a commander's perspective that's really earth shattering. And if there was, I would have paid for Wi-Fi on that cruise ship just to make sure that we could have got a show done, but uh, made it to Mexico. They let me back in the country and I didn't slice my foot open, man. So it was a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> good brother good i was worried about you man you know anytime you and surfboards and and that whole nine yards uh, in the back of my mind i always think okay is the brother gonna be okay <laughs> i mainly spent my time in the casino and hanging out at all the different bars i was on a family cruise with 12 of us so it was fun but it was not even close to relaxing i mean they talk about yeah. herding cats this was hurting cats, man. Just trying to make sure everybody got to dinner at the right time, trying mm -hmm. to make sure my in-laws scooters had a place to park. You know, it was, it was ridiculous, man. I can't wait for Mrs. Tailgate and I to actually go on a real vacation where all I'm doing is having a drink with an umbrella in it and sitting in a hot tub. Those are the best, but at the same time, you can never take away from the family. So uh, we can appreciate that. The question is, did you win or did you lose or did you break even? I actually won a couple hundred dollars. I'm okay. excited about it. And I found a hundred dollars lying on the ground. So Lucky man. You've been on a cruise ship, right? Yes, I have. So I'm, I'm going up and down the stairs. You know, I'm just walking around, just trying to find out where the family is or where this next trivia thing is that we're supposed to do. There was a black chip just sitting on the ground. And I'm looking mm. around and you can see through the stairs. So there's no one there. And I'm sitting here like, all right, well, what do I do with this thing? So if I turn it in, I don't think they're gonna figure out whose it is. They're just gonna keep it for themselves at that point. So I literally stood in that same spot for about five, 10 minutes, waiting for someone to come back. Good Samaritan. No one came back. So Good I figured, Samaritan. all right, possessions, nine tenths of the law. I don't know what it is in Mexico, but I think we are still <laughs> in US waters maybe. So uh, I put it on black. And hey, it hit. So winner, winner. You, you doubled your money. Yeah, man. My man, my man. Hey, uh, can I borrow a dollar? <laughs> I got you, man. I actually, hey. I was going to use it for some souvenirs, right? And I'm walking around the little cruise ports in Mexico and couldn't find a single commander's thing there. It was all old school Redskin stuff, which I get. Yeah, yeah. I found one commander stand. I didn't even find it. The guy saw me wearing my burgundy and gold commander shirt. And he literally yanked my arm and pulled me over and said, please buy this. Because he has had nobody come through asking for it. And I was just shocked that the guy even had commander stuff there. I mean, what the was odds it? of that happening? It was a, uh, a, like a, you know, those like Mexican blankets, that kind yeah. of design. Poncho. It, Kind of like that, but it was a blank, it was a backpack made out of that. Huh. So okay. it was like, you know what, dude? All right, you've obviously trying to get rid of this inventory. You can't find anyone else that wants it. So I'll take it off your hands. You probably ripped me off, but I got a souvenir and I got a story to tell. So it was worth it. Definitely, definitely. Cause our listeners and viewers want to hear that type of stuff. <laughs> Cause I wanted to hear it. So I'm glad you told it, man. <laughs> so what have you been up to the past two weeks, man? As I said, man, working on the SB event stuff, um, getting, a, getting a lot of these contracts together uh, for these upcoming trips, and just trying to rest as much as I possibly can, man, And because my other job has been driving me up the wall, but hey, they butter my bread, so I'm not going to complain about it, you know what I mean? I hear you, man. I mean, that's, I joke around, that's the one that pays the health insurance, so you got to exactly. kind of take that, take that one exactly. a little more serious, but yeah. 
dude, for, forget sleeping. We got a new sponsor that's going to be able to help you out with that. We got to tell the people about these guys. Oh, man. So, ladies and gentlemen of the DMV Mess Hall, listeners and viewers, as Ted said, we have a new sponsor. And it's it's called Don't Sleep Energy Drink. And I am so happy that we were able to make ways with this company because not only can it benefit the listeners, but it benefits your health as well. So you said you're tired, you know, you, you, you didn't want to, can't really stay up. Well, don't sleep energy drink is what you need to take. And I'm here to tell you that, uh, here at here at the DMV Mess Hall, we started with nothing, all right? But we feel as though we can achieve anything if you put your mind to it. And just like that mantra, our mantra, that's how don't sleep energy drink is. You know, if you're feeling tired, don't sleep will give you the energy you need to finish the task at hand. And if you're feeling like an underdog, don't sleep will remind you that you can overcome any challenge. So what are you waiting for? Get yourself a don't sleep energy drink today and believe in yourself. If you're thinking about, well, you know, there's there's all these other drinks that are out there. Let me just give you a little background, you know. So it's a natural energy drink that's made with caffeine, taurine, and B vitamins. Don't sleep is available in regular and get this sugar-free. Don't sleep is a perfect energy drink for athletes, students, and anyone who needs basically a boost of energy. Get yourself a don't sleep energy drink. Trust and believe it's good stuff. Now I'm excited, man, because I could have used a couple of those on that cruise and I'm walking around that ship trying to find my family and I was at the casino way too late. But I'm psyched about the, was it the sugar-free stuff? Oh so yeah. To me, that's definitely gonna help out because I'm diabetic, trying to cut all that stuff down. Some mm -hmm. of those other energy drinks, I just, I won't mess with it. I won't touch it. But the yeah. guys that don't sleep energy, they support a couple of other podcasts I listened to. I reached out to Mike. Mike's a big Commanders fan. He's a fan of yours and mine. Wanted to jump on board, and I'm a fan of his product. I bought it at my buddy Chad Dukes' store. I hate to say it. I'm no longer going to do that. If you go to don'tsleepenergy.com and use promo code DMV Mess Hall, you're going to get 10% off your order. So I'm only buying it from there now. Sorry, Chad. Oh, yeah. Yep. Can't go anywhere else. The MV Mess Hall, put that in the code, get you ten percent off. You'll be happy you did. Now we really appreciate it. We're looking forward to it, and I know during training camp, getting out there, those early mornings, sitting out in Ashburn, I'm best believe I'm going to have one in my cooler while I'm sitting out there taking notes, watching the guys at practice. Not only that, man, uh, I'm going to be having some on my bus trips because we know we're going to need it for that. As well as, like you said, I'll be at training camp, and I'm going to need it also, man. So it, it's it's a great product and tastes good, too. I can't I can't wait. I can't yeah, wait. And football is right around the corner, man. It is, man. It is. And speaking of around the corner, there's a stadium update that might be changing things. So before I left town, it was a couple of weeks ago, I did an interview with ABC7. And a new story came out about Ted Leonsis and the Wizards and the Capitals and the Nationals getting all butt hurt that DC's trying to court the commanders to come back, but they haven't made any improvements to Capital One Arena or down by Nats Park. Well, I did hear that. Yeah. What just came out the other day, actually, this was maybe a week ago, Kentucky Representative James Comer. He is the chairman of the House Oversight and Accountability Committee. He is preparing to introduce legislation that's going to ultimately allow DC to potentially bring the commanders back to RFK. So hmm. this isn't a land sale. DC, Eleanor Holmes Norton, they've been trying to get Congress to sell the RFK land back to DC so DC can then do what they want to with it. Comer saying it's not going to be a land sale. It's going to be a 99-year lease extension and modification to the terms of what can actually be done with the land. Right now, the current lease expires in 2038, and the land can only be used for sports, recreation, and entertainment. 
So they can't build housing on there or stores or anything like that. So this is all definitely great news because last we heard, Eleanor Holmes Norton, who is DC's delegate, said she wasn't going to introduce any federal legislation unless DC Councilman Phil Mendelson, who was opposed to the actual stadium coming, and Mayor Bowser kiss and make up. Well, those two don't like each other. They're not able to get along and they just can't agree on what the land should be used for. Mendelssohn doesn't want a stadium. He wants a mixed use development and he wants housing. Bowser mm -hmm. wants a stadium and wants everything that you can possibly put there. So Norton said, I'm not gonna bring this to Congress because DC doesn't even agree. Good news is, doesn't matter. We don't care if Norton doesn't bring it because Comer is actually going to bring this to the table for all of us, which to me is kind of surprising that a guy from Kentucky has this much control over the DMV. That's but crazy. You know what? I'm fine with it, man. If it gets us a potential chance to have RFK 2.0, hell yeah, let's do it. Man. So, you know, I've been out of the loop. And all I kept hearing today was, hey, there's a there's a new change possibly in the stadium deal. And I was like, well, what the heck could it be? Well, now I know. And man, <laughs> it's, it's not a done deal, obviously. But like you said, the sun is shining definitely brighter on it than before, because before all we were getting was rain on it. So now it, it appears as if maybe the right foot can start going in front of the left foot and vice versa. And we can make some traction with this thing, man. Now here's a question for you. Where did you tailgate when RFK was open? So back along the actual riverbed, we would post up right there. Okay. And probably not the cleanest and safest spot to be in, <laughs> but to me, that's just was the easiest place we pulled into. And it was a landmark. You're right along mm -hmm. the shoreline right there. Is that with the Anacostia? Yeah. Which yeah. I think they're actually starting to let people swim in for the first time. And how long? That blew me away too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go stand at paddle boarding out there and I fall in every once in a while. And I have had to scrub down and basically have like biohazard stuff on me to clean me off. I don't know if I trust that water, but they're saying... They've been doing a ton of work to clean that place up. And mm -hmm. this will, can you imagine an actual stadium back there with potential waterfront property and being able to actually be around that? It just, it's starting to feel like everything's coming up burgundy and gold for a change. And yes, we're, you know, cart before the horse way too much, but yeah, we're not used to having nice things here, man. No, we're not. We're, we're used to taking our brothers and, and, and trashing it. <laughs> a little brother or sisters and, and trashing it and then blaming it on the dog you know but but as i was so so i was talking to someone last week and i was saying hey you know the time is is starting to change it, we're starting to evolve a little bit and if you can't see that then you don't want to see it i mean there is a new aura that's permeating here throughout the dmv and commanders fans worldwide, they feel it. We all feel it. It's just now, it just needs to happen, man, so that we can finally get this monkey off our back. I mean, I'm, I'm walking around on the boat and I'm wearing and rocking my commander's gear. You know, I'm doing my best rally. You know, I'm repping it hard while I'm, you know, out there in Mexico. I had people, and I was, early on when the name changed, I had people say, how can you wear that? I'm sitting here in Cozumel and I have people high five and they do. It's hmm. just, it's different. And it's because that cloud is being lifted. It's Tuesday, July 11th. When we're recording this nine days, man, nine days until the NFL owners meet and they vote on Josh Harris and his group taking over from Napoleon and just finally getting rid of him and letting him die. And I just, I can't believe it's almost here. Nine days, bro. Yeah, nine days. As in the military, eight days and a wake up. So, yeah, I'm ready. I think that's why the councilman, not the councilman, but I think that's why the congressman 
is trying to put this forward. And my only hope is that those DC council members that were saying, we don't want a stadium in DC, partially because Dan Snyder had two, has two investigations that are mm -hmm. actively going. They just didn't want to work with someone like that. I mean, Virginia right. had that bill that they put forth where they were going to get a billion dollars together. But then all the Virginia constituents said, we're not giving taxpayer dollars to a guy that's being indicted right now and being investigated. Well, the, be good, yeah, yeah, so it's gone. All those doors that were closed to us as a franchise and a fan base, they're starting to creep open just a little bit. And I think on the 20th, eventually, once the season gets here and then some more good publicity starts coming around, because let's just be real, it can't get worse than what it was. So yeah. once this stuff starts happening, that crack in that door is just going to open wider and wider and wider, and people are just going to start opening their pockets and wanting to work with these guys. Well, we already know they want to work with them. I mean, the writings have been on the wall. Once this had this news tr took place, they've been wanting to work with them. And you know what they say, man, all it takes is a spark and that spark will become a flame. And right now they are doggone hitting that Flint rock, trying to, to get that spark because they know that once you it ignites and you blow it in a little bit, man, here we are. And it's going to happen sooner. I don't think people actually realize how soon this thing could take place. Now, granted, shovels in the ground, that's going to be a while. But once that ball gets rolling, it's going to go by fast, man. It really is. It is. And one thing that was announced while we were out by Mark Maskey and Nikki Javala from the Washington Post, new ownership is planning on keeping Jason Wright once the sale is finalized. So under NFL that. rules... The Harris Group is not allowed to talk to current employees of the team. So they can't really talk to them about future plans until they take over. Mm -hmm. But to me, some fans are surprised that Jason's sticking around. Some fans are happy that he's sticking around. Some fans just want him going now. Curious what your thoughts are. Well, I got to tell you. So I think like anything in life, when you take on a new job, you're going to have some hiccups. And we know that Jason has had some hiccups. But at the same time, to me, he has taken care of those hiccups. And he, he realized some of the things that he may have done may not have been right. But that to me, that's just the newness of the job. And if anyone can't get past that, then you got a problem because we all had to start from somewhere. And I, I'm not saying that he's the second coming of Jesus. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, that for me, the mistakes that he's made, he has made up for them in other ways. And so I give him a pass and I'm sure just like the ownership gives, gives him a pass, but also realistically, what are you going to do? Fire him now and you have nothing. You, yeah. you got to have something allow the man to to put on a little soft shoe for you and see what he can do for you. I mean, he's held us down thus far. I think that with someone that is in his corner, and I don't know if Dan was in his corner or not. I, I don't know. So I, I can't really necessarily speak on that. But I feel as though if they gave him carte blanche that and he can truly mold the clay how he wants to and they allow him to, I think we'll be all right. That's just me. You? So I agree with you. To me, the fans that want Jason gone, I want to say a majority of those fans are ones that are pissed off about the name change and the mm -hmm. name commanders, period. Yeah. If you were to survey those people and then say, do you want Jason Wright to stick around or do you think he should stick around? And then if they say yes or no, hit that with a follow-up question. How do you feel about the name? I think it's going to be one and the same and that's why you have those people that just have that. They just have that thought of Jason Wright and the Today Show and We Are the Commanders and how poorly that went. And look, I'm a fan of Jason's. Yeah. You know, we've taken pictures with him. We've talked to him a ton. I think he's a good guy. I also think that he's made some mistakes. You cannot hide from the mistakes that were made. I think that there were some people that were 
A, kept in positions, and mm -hmm. B, put in positions that they probably never should have been put in. Mm -hmm. You know, misspelling players' names on your 90 greatest players' roster. Travesty. Travesty. You know, Jason didn't proofread that, and I would never expect a team president to proofread that. To me, those are like five rungs below him on who made that mistake. Mm -hmm. And hopefully heads rolled and quality control and things were put in place. Yeah. You know, the and it goes back to what I was saying. It, it, you know, he's new at this position. He's not going to know everything, but each day he gets better and better. And we've seen him to me go from the terminology, excuse me, a small pup, even though he was a president, but now he's a grown dog, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Those mistakes, I don't see him making those same mistakes twice. I just don't. And I hope that they're not done twice. My thing is with the new ownership group coming in, thousand percent agree with you that it's going to be July 20th. Rookies report July 21st. Training camp opens, what, the 27th? You're going to fire the team president right before all this stuff happens? doesn't make any sense. I mean, usually, I mean, I've been a part of a acquisition. Mm -hmm. So past life, other big boy job that paid my healthcare bills. We got bought out by a company from China. No joke. They gave us Rosetta Stone so we could learn Chinese. At that point, I realized I got to start looking for another job. And no <laughs> offense. I mean, I love Chinese food. But what they were trying to get me to do wasn't what I wanted to do for my career. So then they brought in people over top to kind of shadow because they knew there was going to be an exodus and they knew that mm -hmm. people were going to leave. And to me, the Harris group, they're doing what's right. They're not trying to up in the apple cart because they weren't able to buy the team in your typical turnover time frame in the NFL, which is right after the Super Bowl in your February, January, if your team's not in it. And Let's see how these guys go. I've got a lot of friends over there that are damn good people that mm -hmm. they're lumped in with the bad because they worked for damn. But these people did the best with what they could with the limited resources. And I can only imagine how good a job they're going to do once they have an ownership group that is competent and that's going to back them. You said a mouthful. And that's that's what it boils down to, man. Our listeners know that I am not one to kiss the franchise's ass. I will call them out left and right. But if the right people are kept in place, and obviously there's going to be new blood brought in, but if oh, yeah. they're given a chance, and I hope that they're given a chance, then, man, talk about just doors opening and people – wanting to give money to the team and sponsors. But to me, what do you think Jason needs to do to be successful, to stick around, not just this next year, but for years to come? Well, I think that he needs to have his finger on the pulse with the fans. Now, granted, you, you get fans who come up with sometimes these far-fetched ideas and you just can't entertain it. I mean, you listen to it, but you just can't entertain it. But when you've got true fans that have their finger on the pulse and say, hey, man, you know, we've done it this way before and it's actually worked. What do you think about this? And then you can see him, the wheel spinning in his head to get it done. Fan input, man. I, I really believe in that now, there, like i said there's gonna come there's gonna come a time when it's like you're, you're kidding a parent because he's the president he's not gonna entertain it he's gonna no you know this is how it is but there's some things that i do believe that he can enter that he can change and so that's my biggest thing is listen to the fans we are all aren't gonna steer you in the wrong direction some will but like i told you but some won't so we have, I believe, great intentions. I mean, some stuff is common sense. I mean, you got fans that are pissed off because it's Pepsi versus Coke in the stadium. Yeah. And, you know, well, hey, sorry, that's not a priority. <laughs> like, no. what soda? There was actually a guy on our cruise that I heard talking at dinner at a table beside us saying he won't go. I think it might have been on Carnival that he won't ride because they've got Pepsi products. 
Like if you're not going to, you know, come to a commander's game because they got Pepsi over Coke, then you know what? Watch it on TV. That's not <laughs> something that is pressing no. and needs to be taken care of right now. But to me, fans are coming back. They're buying tickets. Companies are buying suites. Sponsors mm -hmm. are giving money no matter what, just because Dan is gone. Yeah. So to me, for him to stick around and be successful, it's got to be a smoother operation. The small blocking and tackling that was missed, the things that went wrong with the Sean Taylor statue, with the towel debacle years, what, two years ago, those things have to be addressed. And there has to be a plan for what the new stadium is going to do because Jason cannot affect wins and losses. No, but he can affect talking to those politicians and trying to see where we can get our new stadium, making headway there because never knew what the hell Bruce Allen did. They just said all he did was try and get us a new stadium. Well, he was a great what? negotiator. Yeah. Didn't happen for a great negotiator. We got screwed over in Kirk Cousins contract and Trent Williams for nothing. And we still have a crappy ass stadium. So maybe that can be Jason's legacy here. Fingers crossed. Ted, man, I think that anything is possible right now. I, I, I look at this like, um, you, you know, what double Dutch is right. Jumping rope oh, yeah. double Dutch. So you know how you've got the, the don't ask the me two, to though. No, no, no. But you got the, basically you got the two people on the edge who are swinging the rope and the ropes are, are turning in ever, you know, at opposite ends. Well, and, and the person they're looking in and they want to jump in. That's how I view our fan base. That's how I view Jason, Wright. right? He's waiting. He's waiting on his time to, to, to jump in. And as soon as they say, go, I have a feeling that he's going to take us to the next level. Our fan base, a lot of them have already jumped in, but you still got those ones who are on the outside and they're waiting. They're waiting to see when is my time that, that they do enough for me to be able to jump in. And I think in eight days in a wake up, well, I'll say 12 days, I'll give it, I'll give it a couple of days. I don't think they're just going to jump in right when it happens, but I'll give it up until that, Wednesday or Friday that next week, that's when I see that they're going to jump in and they're going to make some things happen for all of us. Then I saw you post about the uh, commander's ticket deal that they were doing on there. Was it 91st birthday? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that and was I, pretty sweet, man. That just the fact that they were offering that to us. So, you know, so man, you know, I'm a positive guy and all I want to do is bring positivity. And one of the things that Someone said, well, yeah, they may have been doing that for the tickets, but the parking is still 60 bucks. And I just, I, I, I almost lost it because I said, you could carpool with someone. You could catch the Metro if you wanted to. You can ride share. You can do whatever you want and, and And that's just one lot. They have plenty of lots where it just, it, it's, it's less than 60 bucks to park. Yeah. You know, at this point, stop making if you stop making any excuses. If you don't want to go, just say you don't want to go. That's how I feel, man. I'm right there with you, dude. I just I don't have time for it because everyone will look for a reason to be negative. Yeah. And I, you know, admittedly am like that with this team sometimes where I don't digest all the rosy crap they try and feed me. You know, I try and make sure that they're not trying to shove something down my throat. But the guy complaining that parking 60 bucks. If you go to a Capitals game, parking is 30 bucks. And guess what? There are 41 games, right? So Ooh. you're going to go to a lot more Caps games at that point if you're a season ticket holder than you are Commanders games where you only got eight games. So just doing the math, you can still take the Metro down there. And like you said, there are other lots. You got the Jericho lot out there. It was the, uh, what, two years ago when the Chargers came to town? My buddies from Bolt Pride wanted me to host 200 of their fans. I said, no. I will not host 200 Chargers fans at my tailgate. Wow. But go hang out at the Jericho lot, the old lot right there on Arena Drive. Yeah. And they set up a major shop out there. They brought in a food truck, did a bunch of stuff, and it was still cheaper than parking in the stadium. And you're 
what one parking lot farther away than the actual stadium lots. But guess what? You're that much closer to the highway to get out of the stadium and to get on actual 95. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people might bitch that it's a farther walk in, but you're not going to be sitting as much traffic getting out. Just look at the bright side of it. The people just want to complain to complain. So I, I had to, I had to put on my good boy hat and just let it ride. But uh, the deal, basically, two tickets upper level for forty bucks a piece. I mean, that was awesome. And then if you wanted one ticket for eighty bucks, seventy nine bucks for the lower level, two hundred section, if I'm not mistaken, that's a great deal. It is. Now, here's the thing. How about doing it, sprinkling it in for other games throughout the season, not just the first game? You want to bring people back? Keep doing incentives like that. But that, that, but let me put a caveat there. Okay. Right? Don't do that in center for the Eagles game. Don't oh, do no. that in center for the Giants game. Not because, NFC East game. No, no. Yeah. Or make it so only people with a DMV zip code can buy these tickets. Are you and listening, they commanders? Be resold. Are you listening, commanders? These 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 are nuggets, you know. Uh, as as uh, in in the military, you know, we we call that a clue. We we you know, somebody will be tapping their foot. So, you know, do it for another another game, and with like Ted said, with our zip codes, our area, like they did for the playoffs. Yeah. I remember that. I I remember them doing that for the playoffs. They said, "No, if you're out of out of the zip code, you're not going to get it." Now, I'm sure that the secondary market had somebody. Hey, I'll I'll give you three hundred bucks to buy five tickets or whatever have you. We can't stop that. But well, you it, actually can. So you can put on the ticket stipulation that they cannot be resold. So I had World Series tickets. I got directly mm-hmm. from the Nationals. Mm-hmm. These tickets I could not transfer. And if I posted the barcode online, they look online and see all that inventory, they could come back to me and take those tickets away. Didn't know that. There are ways that it can be done. Okay. So you can just specifically help out the people here. And I talked to a commander's representative a couple of years back. This was a conversation we had. I said the stadium is empty. Why don't you guys give tickets to little league football teams to boys and girls football teams, boys and girls club, things like that. Well, they actually can't do that because it comes out of the team's pocket because it's all revenue sharing. They have to then pay the other NFL owners, their percentage of those tickets. If they donate them out. Okay. So it's not as simple as me saying, Hey, these seats are empty. Let's just invite these clubs down there. Cause to me, you want to build a new fan base. You want to get new fans, get them in the stadium and the seat's going to be empty anyway, let them come for free. And maybe while they're there, they'll buy concessions, but it's actually not that simple. But if you could make it so the tickets are discounted to a degree and you use this promo code and you're here and your credit card lines up, then why not? Why not do it? Instead of being empty. I was shocked though, man, that, they still had tickets available for the home opener. I couldn't believe that they could still offer this package for the home opener, considering Dan's gone for all intents and purposes. I told you, people are still double dutching, bro. They, I didn't they, think they were they, for the they, home they, opener, man. I, it, I mean, no, you know, DC, DC no, is no. a C or B seen town. We're I, a bandwagon, it, let's just go town. Trust me, I hear you loud and clear, bro. But once again, you know that there's deep seated hate oh, still. Yeah. And, and until he is gone, it's just not going to happen. He, it's got to be a situation where he is completely out of the picture. And right now, it's still, he's, he's, he's got that uh, still there. And so, like I, and I think that's one of the things that I said that I mentioned in my video that, Hey, look, I understand that you still may not want to spend any money because I don't know right now, if you spent money to go to the game right now, whose pocket would that go to? Would that go to Dan's or will it go to the new owners? So maybe people are thinking that way. I still won't spend any money right now until the contract is signed. And I feel as though once that contract is signed, 
the floodgates will open. But right now, people are still, I told you, they're double dutching, bro. They're, 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 they're waiting for their chance to get in. Well, Dan's getting his $6.05 billion, no matter if you buy tickets now or don't buy tickets now. It's you the know, principle. It, it, it's the I, principle, Smokey. I hear you, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like, did someone have a, a Budweiser over July 4th? You know, are Ooh. you drinking beer? Because you're putting money in Dan's pocket still. There's still revenue well, share there. Well, you know, if you want to talk about Budweiser, we know that their stocks and sales have plummeted big time. Oh, yeah. Big time, yeah. bro. They, they were begging people to buy. They said, think of, you know, it got to the point. It got to the point where they said, think about the Budweiser employees. You got to feed those you, horses, man. Hey, those Clydesdales. <laughs> and those things are massive, by the way. I was out there last year. I saw them at their uh, factory, at the uh, yeah. brewery. Yeah, massive. So, And I just hope those fans that are still waiting to jump in get a chance to actually get some tickets without getting ripped off come week <laughs> one when there's nothing left. Because the party that is going to be at FedEx Field is going to be unreal. It's oh, the yeah. only thing that is officially happening to commemorate that jackass being gone and best believe FedEx won't know what hit it, man. I, I, all no. I can think of is 2012 when Robert was running down the sidelines against the Vikings and oh, yeah. how loud and how electrifying that stadium got. It's yeah. going to be like that times a thousand, man. And he was looking back at the, at the defender going down the sideline and, and, and he kicked the afterburner in. So That's commander, true. commander nation, or commander's ownership. How about this? I saw the ticket special late. How about doing it again, doing it one more time and giving more of a lead time to, so people could purchase tickets. How about that? If, if you can do it, figure out some kind of special that you promotion that you want to do. I don't know, but just give it one more shot and see how it goes. Hey, I'll, I'll do this, man. For our listeners, if you want to get tickets and you want to take advantage of my season ticket holder discount and trying to avoid some of that stuff, hit me up. I got no problem helping you guys out get seats and trying to avoid some fees because I want burgundy and gold in those stands. Granted, I don't think yeah. Cardinals fans are going to travel, but we need as many of us in there to commemorate this day as we possibly can. Because I remember the first game after the name change and how packed that stadium was. And mm -hmm. I had a talk with the junkies the day after. And I told them, it's just going to be like this today. It's not going to be like this two weeks down the road. Imagine if we could just recreate this, man, and just get these yeah. people out here. And, you know, these players, I think they're feeling it too. You know, Jahan Dotson, was practicing during his own time in Florida, hanging out with OBJ, Elijah Moore, and Zay Flowers. He was in Fort Lauderdale, and I was just down there. That's where my boat left from. The humidity down there was ridiculous. This young man is taking time out of his vacation, because this is the player's vacation time right now, to put in work. These guys are hungry. Jacoby Brissett, Sam Howe, Brian Robinson today were just seen on, I think it was Brian's Instagram story, mm -hmm. practicing together. You know, there's oh. just, I don't remember hearing these stories before, man. I, I really don't. And maybe I've just got all the jaded stuff in here, so kick the good stuff out. But hearing these guys trying to get together and build this rapport and work on their craft with other vets, to me, is awesome. Ted, they see what everyone else sees. We, we had just a small taste of it last year, just a small taste. And now everything, as we've said, is starting to come together. It's, it's starting to mold. And it's, you, can, you, you see it. And not only that, you feel it. And like they say, you feel good, you play good. And these guys are trying to go back and make the playoffs. They're trying to make the playoffs, bro. 
I, I mean, they, to me, forget making the playoffs. We haven't won a playoff game since Gibbs 2.0. Uh, yeah. You know, let, let's let's do something. You know, it's there was an article that John Kime wrote, and I've been trying to catch up on everything, and it was about Eric Bieniemy, but it was mm-hmm. coming from the player's perspective and how he is instilling a sense of urgency, but also a sense of ownership. And there was a play where Sam Howell got to his second read late. He got to his read, but he got to it late. He came off the field and immediately apologized to the enemy. Said, sorry, coach, I saw it late. The enemy said, you saw it. That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. And he is training these guys. He's changing these guys. No offense to Scott Turner and the other coaches that were here, but wide receivers weren't running the same depth on routes. There just wasn't that consistency. There wasn't that accountability. The enemy is putting it in here. And, you know, we asked our listeners, you know, Vegas has us at six and a half wins. Where do you see us? Before we get to the season, I want to hear where you think we're going to be. Pre-training camp and then post-training camp. Once we actually get a chance to see, because to me, we got some players. And this is why I'm also so excited about Don't Sleep Energy coming on board. Because there are some commanders players I'm saying the NFL better not sleep on. Because if you do, Jahan Dotson being one of them, you're going to get burned. And it goes back to the whole Madden rating type of thing where players are like, no, I should have a better rating than that. I used to be really into Madden. I'm not into it as, as like I used to be. But but uh, I think that when it comes down to it, man, we're going to open a lot of eyes. So to answer your question, right now, I'm going to say seven and a half wins. How do you get I, seven and a half? And I, I, I got to go with seven and a half wins okay. right now because I just haven't seen any pads, you know. Now, once after training camp and during training camp, I'll be able to say, "Ooh, man, uh, it's going to go higher or lower right now. Seven and a half wins. All right. So I'm going to give you mine later on. I took the over under. I took the over that we had at six and a half and I put some okay. decent money down. Just because to me, they're either going to do really well or they're going to do really bad. <laughs> and I want to ask you a couple bold predictions before the season starts. I have one. I know that's not going to make some people happy, but that's why it's going to be a bold prediction. But I, talking about this, man, I'm literally, I know it's hard to see, but I got goosebumps and I cannot wait because just a couple more sleeps and training camp is going to be here. And this season is going to be over. And all this crap about the, I'm sorry, crap's probably not the right word, but I don't care about the home run derby. I don't care (laughs) about Wimbledon. I don't care about the NBA Summer League. I care about the NFL. I care about the burgundy and gold. And I want football back. And it's been nice to have a break from it for a little bit. But no, I'm hungry. And I need to hear some pads being hit, man. Oh, and you're going to eat, bro. (laughs) <laughs> we're, we're gonna eat and in eight days in the wake up it's gonna happen all right and i can't wait to be out there with all of you guys and i hear the music playing but i i i, it, I, I gotta mention once again thank you to don't sleep energy drink for being a sponsor of the dv mess hall get your don't sleep energy drink ladies and gentlemen and i'll be remiss if i didn't say it Dale Gay Ted, rally captain. We're going to rep it hard, or we're not going to rep it at all. We'll see you guys next week for another edition of the DV Mess Hall.